come to the fair. Nearly everyone has childhood memories of the fair that came to their town. To young eyes, it seems to appear by magic overnight. But to the people of a travelling fair, it's a way of life that's all its own. In many cases, handed down from generation to generation. I know my grandfather was doing it before. So, uh, you know, I think his brothers was in the business as well. You know, it's been a family business for a long while. That's John Barker, eldest son of the present owner of Barker's Amusements. Very early morning. It was around six o'clock today. Work starts on assembling the rides. <laughs> Not quite the easy life many people think. Travelling fair is not an all the year round business. They have a closed season when a lot of the maintenance is done on the rides. We always start around the second week or third week in March this year. It's around about the same dates each year. Rugby's the first place and finishes in middle of November time our season. There's longer seasons. They start in February, some people do. But, uh, you know, we always start middle of March when the bad weather's gone. John's brother Martin Barker has just acquired a new ride, the Meteor. At the moment he's altering this to improve the customer flow. Um, we're just altering the doors now because it was next to each other and we didn't like it so we put it now opposite so we can balance it easier and then we've got to alter the steps and, that and the entrances the way that they come in and the way they come off. Some of the rides, like the cage, are erected by hydraulics, so are very fast to assemble. The more traditional waltzer and dodgems break down to small sections for transport, so take much longer to put together. Uh, the, like the dodgems started about six o'clock time this morning, it's about done what's time now, about nine I suppose, it's say three hours. Like the waltzer, yesterday, that was all day job yesterday. But I'd be middle of the morning before the dodgems is finished all together. I suppose if you had to, you could do you know, a day and a half, so you'd be ready. One independent ride owner is Charlie Colton. He joins up with this fair for most of the year. Charlie's wife, two daughters and son are all part of his team. I'm married in no time. <laughs> How long has he been doing it? All my life, I have, yeah, my parents and granddads and that, everything. And uh, it's, it's the life you know, isn't it? You know what I mean? Will his family follow him? Well, I don't know, they're a bit, you know, a bit unsorted, I think, you know. They don't like it so much as I do, like, you know. I think they'd rather be a bit, you know. More ordinary life, like, you know, according to what they say, like, you know. So I don't know if they will follow on or what, you mean. A lot of the fair equipment is quite vulnerable. 
Do they get much bother from troublemakers? No, not really, in one way. You know, we try to avoid it if we can, because it's bad for business, you know. But if we have to come to it, you know, we come to it, like, you know. But if it invited it, we do. How bond you get, like, you know, trying to break the coconut on your paintwork and all that, you know what I mean? They never seem to interfere with us a lot, you know what I mean? Because they know we're well, you know. We all cling together, like, you know. All fairground rides and equipment are run off 110 volt generators for safety. These are maintained in tip top condition because if a failure occurs, the ride and the money flow stops. The rides, of course, have to conform to high standards of safety. I say it was tested each year beforehand, and it's tested probably two or three times during the course of the year, safety-wise. Tommy Connell, another independent showman, puts the finishing touches to the monster. No, mine will get done. It's all right, boy. You ready, lads? The smaller independent rides start to arrive. Sandra and Joe Merrin own two children's roundabouts. Like to watch other people work. They're treated with special care. Joe built most of them himself. We've come from rugby. And rugby it's just all like black ash. And it was uh, it was that dry this year, because you have a gust of wind come up and all the kids just tread all this filth and it's terrible, it is. My dad's got a waltzer. Yeah. Where's my dad at the moment? Donington, my dad's at. Like most showmen, Joe also does his own artwork. No, we're not with these all the while. We just... This is about the fifth time we've been here, I think. Yeah, and we've been to Rugby and Meesham, and I've done that one. Hey. And uh, where do we go next? Oh, we go to Lutterworth from here. Sometimes you feel you want to go in for something else a bit bigger, you know, but um, it's when you can afford it, really. Everything is now ready. The weather's fine. Are they expecting a good crowd? Well, I hope we do. We've had a few steady players, so we hope this one's given a surprise and come up a bit. Uh, probably Saturday, we'll see more children down, you see, so Saturday will be the best, best daylight for business, really, with these. For the kids, you see, with the candy floss and toffee apples. Uh, not the first time. It gets better as we go along, here. Not tonight, the first night. I 
Predictions are correct so far, with a fairly slow start. cleaver up edgeways and we used to split a bullet on the meat cleaver and hit two separate targets with the one bullet. Albert Rogers has been with fairs all his life and can tell many a tale. My son went to school, his only small went to school and the teacher said to him, and what sort of a stall have you got on the fair? He said, we've got a shooting stall. And he said, and can you shoot? He said, yes. He said, what can you do? He said, I can hit a target. So he said, well, that's not very clever to hit a target. He said, it is when it's edgeways. the Winchester range there was a fella came that could shoot very well and I uh, I said to him uh, you can shoot who taught you to shoot he said you did when I was a lad <laughs> whatsoever in it. It's a perfectly pure sweet.
but all things come to an end. Most of the rides have been dismantled during the night. This is usually done with the generators turned off, and so in the dark. We do it um, well, all night, near enough like we get to bed about half one, yeah. then get up about six in the morning, like, you know, and carry on. It's just a rout routine, you know. You get used to it, like, right, you know. Well, I can't work with lights, I can't, because, like, sometimes, like, you'll have them on till about half eleven, and then when you turn them off, that's it, your eyes, you, you got used to the light, you can't see a thing. Just the final loading now remains to be completed. The new site for the fair will have been booked weeks ahead. The independent rides and sideshow owners will go their separate ways. Some will join other fairs and some will stay with this one. The fair moves out, bound for another town, not too far away, and the process will start all over again, bringing its own kind of magic to young and old alike. It's just the life you know, isn't it?